now um, I'm going to bring up um, a really good friend of mine, um, Gary Peters. You know, he, he, when we first started working together, um, he was a state senator. And um, I was pushing, as uh, I still am today, on trying to get these auto insurance rates down. You know, we've got a, still a lot going on. <laughs> still a lot going on in the legislature. And you know, this governor is trying to take away our health care benefits under no fault. And they're trying to gut the system to give more profits to the insurance companies. And I remember uh, back in, in those days when, uh, when, when Peters was in the state senate, he was one of the first people that I met with. And, uh, and he just gets it, you know, he's right on the issue. He, he was a, a leader in that. He's always been a leader uh, and a really good, uh, good person. And, uh, you know, he, he's, done a, he's done a great job for all, for all of us. And, um, uh, you know, we're thrilled that he's now in the U.S. Congress and uh, he's gonna continue to be doing great things for us. And so uh, we want you to put your hands together for uh, our new congressman. Did you say the mighty 14th? Is that what you said? Did you say the mighty 14th? All right, so the congressman from the mighty 14th, Gary Peters. Well, thanks, Butch. Uh, that's right. Uh, so it is great to, great to be here. Uh, great to have an opportunity to chat. And uh, hopefully we'll do some uh, Q&A as well, questions. And I'd love to have some dialogue with you. But it's uh, wonderful to have this opportunity. And it's particularly great to be here with my colleague, uh, John Conyers, who is uh, an incredible uh, leader uh, in the, the House. And he is he was a little, uh, he was a little um, uh, I would say, uh, humble when he talked about the Violence Against Women's Act. He talked about the uh, signing of it, and as you know, that's a, a bill that unfortunately became partisan, which should not be partisan. It should not be partisan standing up to protect the women in our country. It should not be partisan to fund shelters uh, for folks uh, who are victims of domestic violence and all of the things that happen with the Violence Against Women's Act. Uh, and, but it, we were able to get that through, what, two weeks ago, is, and the president signed it. But what he forgot to say is the original author of that bill, yes. John Conyers. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> and, and, uh, and that's why I'm so proud to, to serve with him. Uh, I have opportunity. Uh, uh, we get pulled that We're running all over the place in Washington. We're there. But we come together on the floor to vote. Uh, some of my um, fondest memories of my service so far in Congress is sitting next to John, and uh, we just talk about all sorts of stuff. And uh, those are memories uh, that I will uh, always have and uh, look forward to continuing to have more of those memories. So thank you, John. Thank you for your service and, and uh, really a treasure here in our country. Well, we, uh, we have uh, a number of uh, huge challenges uh, in Washington right now that we are uh, confronting uh, the question about how we have the energy to keep fighting it, because we do. Uh, let me just touch on, on two or three of them, and then we can uh, open it up if that okay. works. Yep. Uh, certainly, first and foremost right now, it's all about the budget, and Congressman Conyers talked about these uh, cuts that are going through. We've got this uh, sequestration uh, that has been baked into the, the law from the Republicans and has been moving forward, which are basically just a across-the-board cuts uh, that impact people in significant ways. Uh, we all understand uh, that we have to have cuts, but uh, this is not the way to do it. And I think the president has been very good in explaining as to why that is not the case. So one, they are very uh, large cuts in the short run, which we know will have a negative impact on the economy. In fact, if you're an economist, no matter where you are as an economist, if you're on the left or the right or all the different places in between, there's one thing they agree on, and it's hard to get economists to agree on anything, but they all agree that this is a bad thing. It is very bad to take this kind of money out of the economy as it's starting to recover right now. It still has to go, uh, we, we would like to have it stronger than it is. And the last thing you want to do is have these kind of cuts that have an impact. Congressional Budget Office says that up to 750,000 jobs could be lost as a result of these kind of cuts across the economy. 750,000 jobs. That is a big number. Some economists even have a, a bigger number. In addition to that, the way the cuts are done, just across the board, they're cutting good programs that we should be investing in. Instead, we shouldn't be cutting. We should be putting more money in, making sure that we're growing the economy. The other programs that we might be able to cut more aren't being cut more uh, in defense and other areas because uh, it's just across the board flat types of cuts, which makes no sense. As I explained to my constituents, it's kind of a situation if, if, uh, if you're with your family budget, if you have less money in your family budget, uh, you normally make uh, decisions as to how you're going to spend that less money. You don't normally cut everything equally. So if you have your food budget and you have your going to the movie theater budget, 
you're probably going to make sure your food budget has enough money to feed your kids to make sure your family has the nutrition that they need and you may cut your going to the movies budget more to make sure that that food budget is there that's not happening to the federal government everything is being cut across the board uh, one program in particular that i've always been passionate about and i think it's probably been one of the most successful federal programs in history that's the head start program yeah. that allows our young children to have that head start in life and if you look just at a dollars and cents basis every dollar you invest in a head start program for a young child has about a seven dollar return to the taxpayers now you don't have to be a math major to know that that's a good deal one dollar spent gets you seven dollars later that is a good deal but in these sequestration cuts across the country nearly a hundred thousand children will not be in a head start program coming up that is unconscionable. That is why we've got to fight it. We've got to tell, uh, let folks know uh, that uh, we can't stand for these types of across the board cuts that impact people in our communities and will quite frankly will cost us more money in the long run. It just is not good business that we go forward. So we uh, have a variety of those. We'll be happy to talk about those with questions that come forward. Uh, and then as we uh, go past the, some of these uh, fiscal issues, and we've got this new Ryan budget that's coming out that will decimate Medicare and change Medicare as we know it and all sorts of uh, bad things which we can talk about, we do have to deal with a couple other issues that I feel very strongly about and, and folks in the audience I know uh, care about. Uh, one is we have to move forward with comprehensive uh, of uh, immigration reform in this country. We have a system that simply does not work right now. Uh, and I'm uh, very pleased that the president is very focused uh, on immigration reform. In fact, uh, when Congressman Kinders and I were with him a couple months ago when we flew back to Washington with him when he came in to uh, speak here in the area, he uh, came back to talk to us and, and said that you know, after we get past some of these fiscal issues, uh, his number one issue uh, is immigration reform. The whole idea is we've got to bring people out of the shadows. We've got to really return to what has made this country great which is we bring people to our country who want to pursue the American dream, they should be able to have the ability to do that. So we will move forward uh, with that, and uh, we may have a window of opportunity. We're seeing some Republicans that are coming forward in the Senate that have put a framework together for immigration reform. Uh, I think finally what, what may have prompted that is they see the, return, the uh, results of the last election. Uh, which uh, says that if you are not talking to folks, if you're not talking to people and the issues that they care about, particularly the Latino community, Hispanic community, and others, uh, they're not going to vote for you. And so uh, the Republicans are starting to realize that maybe they need to be talking to a larger group of people. Uh, and uh, although I don't know if they fully get that, because right now they just try to change the rules so that they can win elections even though they get a minority of the vote. Uh, but uh, you know, they should focus on actually trying to win a majority of the voters, which means talking about these issues. So hopefully we've got a window to move that forward. The other issue that I feel very strongly about, and Virgie mentioned, is uh, that we've got to have some common sense gun regulations put in place. We've got to do that. <laughs> the majority of the American people are on this issue. We've got a window to do that, particularly on some things uh, as what I think are simple, that, but it will be controversial. Things like background checks. To me, anybody before they buy a weapon should have a background check before they purchase that weapon. It should be 100%. Right now, 40%. 40% of all weapons that are legally purchased, 40% that are legally purchased are purchased without any kind of background check through the loopholes that exist there with private sellers and, and gun shows and, and the like. Uh, and what happens is that we have some tragedies, and I'll just mention one as an example of how if this law was in place, we might have prevented a tragedy. A couple months ago, you may recall a shooting in, in Wisconsin with a man who uh, 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 perpetrated that crime. And the, the back story of that was is that he was uh, in uh, divorce uh, with his wife or in the proceedings. She was afraid for her life. This is, uh, wasn't going very well. She was frightened, uh, deathly frightened, and went to the court and got a court order, a protective order, to keep him away from her because she was fearful. So there is a restraining order, a court order. Under federal law, you can't get a weapon if you have a background check. If they do a background check and you have a restraining order against you, you can't buy a weapon. But he went through one of these loopholes and he bought one legally through a loophole. He bought a weapon, the next day he went into the spa where she works, killed her, shot her dead, killed another co-worker, injured two others and then shot himself and killed himself. Well if we had 100% background checks, I don't know if we protect everybody, but we could have protected those folks. We have to do this. This is common sense. And the thing is that we've got 85 to 87 percent of the American people that agree with that issue. You look at any of the opinion polls, even folks with the NRA, 65 to 70 percent of members of the NRA 
believe we should have comprehensive background checks. We've got to do it. We've got to stand up to the leadership of those folks and stand up to the Republicans and say we've got to move this forward. And that's the same with uh, the assault weapons and these uh, mega clips. Uh, you know, you can buy these magazines that have 100 rounds of ammunition. Uh, I don't know any hunter that needs to have 100 rounds of ammunition to go after a deer. You know, unless, what's that? Or a herd of deer, yeah, you have to have a lot of deer. Uh, and I don't know why you need that. Uh, and I, last I saw, the, the deer don't shoot back, so there's no reason to have 100 rounds of uh, ammunition. Uh, and and it, we had um, um, uh, Gabby's uh, wife, Gabby Gifford's uh, uh, husband, come in. Uh, Mark Kelly came in and talked to us and you know, talked about that horrible day. And we all remember the, the tragedy of that shooting uh, uh, that occurred. And, and he was, uh, had very compelling discussion about that and the fact that that shooter, the reason they were able to stop that shooter after he brought up the, the shooting spree in Tucson was that he had a 30 magazine clip when he was done with the 30 magazines, they dropped it and as he went to reload they were able to jump him and stop him. So he had a 30 magazine clip. The laws that we're looking at now are 10, 10 rounds or less. And he said uh, very clearly, it was very clear when they reconstructed the crime scene that had he only had a 10 magazine clip that little nine-year-old girl who died, who was shot, killed, would it be alive today? This is what we're talking about. This is life or death issues, things that we have to all come together as citizens of this great country and say, enough is enough, and let's pass these laws. Thank you so much.